So first of all, we have to know what is PHP. What is PHP? So PHP was originally created by a Danish Canadian programmer. He was named as Rasmus Rasmus Lardov in 1994. He originally gave the name for PHP as personal home page, but then later on he changed it to hypertext preprocessor. So let me explain what is happened. Why did he put hypertext preprocessor? So PHP is a widely used open source general purpose scripting language which is essentially suited for web development and can be embedded into HTML. So what does it mean by embedded HTML? I will explain it in the coming slides. So that's we know hypertext what is hypertext, hypertext is HTML, but what about preprocessor? What is preprocessor? So preprocessor means it processes what will appear as a hypertext before the hypertext appears on the screen so you got me so whatever whatever i put as a as my code it will first appear as hypertext so it will appear you know inside now it will, i cannot see it. it will appear inside the server side so i as a client i cannot see on the screen so this means that whatever it will allow me to do programming it will allow me to do loops data research before the script generates this HTML that will appear on, on the screen. So, for example, if I click, right click on my mouse, if I go to the inspect option, I can see the codes, right? So, even if in this particular web page, if there is any PHP used, I cannot see it because the PHP codes are working on the server side. So, whatever happens, it actually works and gives us the output on the server side behind the screen. What we can see is just plain HTML. We'll learn more about it in the coming slides. Okay, so why do we need PHP? Why PHP? There are many advantages for using PHP. I have noted some of them in here. Firstly, it runs on different platforms, so no matter what your platform, whether it's Windows, <coughs> Linux, Unix, it'll work on all platforms. It's compatible with almost all servers used today, such as Apache, IIS, these are the most famous servers. It's free to download and they have an official website www.php.net and you will get almost all the resources you need of PHP in their website. It's easy to learn and runs effectively on the server side. As I told you before, it's server side scripting language. It's an open source technology that is supported by a large community of users and developers. So it will not die soon. So most of the companies nowadays, most of the organizations nowadays, they use PHP on their web page, on their website, on different on different platforms. They use they play with the PHP code. So it is very popular and it will not extinct soon. So, we should know that how does PHP actually work? So, how does it work? So, I have divided into three different ways how does it work. The first way is what distinguishes PHP from something like client-side JavaScript is that the code is executed on the server generating HTML which is then sent to the client the server, the client would receive the result of running that script, but would not know what the underlying code was. So, what I'm telling that the JavaScript is actually client side. It's a client side JavaScript, but PHP is a server side. So, what's the difference between them is so if me as a as a owner of a web page, if I want to put any PHP code on my web page, there is no way the client others can actually see what I put as my PHP code. All they can see is only plain HTML. So whatever I give my PHP code in my website or in my web page, they can only see the HTML code. So PHP is highly secure. You can even configure your web server to process all your HTML files with PHP and then there's really no way that users can tell what you have up your sleeve. So you see, it is highly secured. There is no way the client can actually see what I have done in my web page. All they can see is just a plain HTML code. The second is the server has an interpreter. That means it has a program that takes the script you write as input 
and it executes all the commands that are enclosed in the script type tags. So in PHP, we use that particular tag. We open uh, with a tag and we say PHP, and then we we write all our codes in between these two tags. And the amazing thing is, whatever we put as our um, as an input, whatever script we put as an input, it executes between these enclosed type tags. So that's a very special thing, okay? And that's the reason whatever happens, the client can only see the HTML. He cannot see the PHP codes because the PHP code executed between their own tags. And the last is, it execute my display data, perform comparison on loops. It will also access a database to search for values and display this result on the screen. So now let us know about the client side scripting versus server side scripting. What's the difference between them? So the first difference is the client side runs on the user's computer. So that is browser interprets the script. So that means if I put any Java code, any HTML code, I can actually right click on my mouse. I can go to inspect and I can see all the codes on there. So it's a client side, so I can see it. On the other hand, the server side script it runs on the web server. So there is no way to see it. What happens is behind the screen. Client side source code is visible to the user. As I said earlier, it can be visible. If you go to the inspect, you can actually see the code that is given in there. On the other hand, <coughs> for the server side, source code is not visible to the users because the output of server side program is an HTML page, as I explained earlier. For the client side scripting, used for it, it like the client side scripting is mostly used for validations and functionality for the user events. But you see, the server side scripting is actually used for business logic and data access for the database. So the pages are created dynamically. So you see the, the importance of PHP codes, importance of Python, importance of all codes that are actually work as a server side scripting. It plays a very important role in business sectors. Yeah. Coming to the client side scripting, it depends on the browser and the version. So that means if you're web browser if you're let's say google chrome it's not up to date maybe you will not see um, some html codes on the other hand for the server side scripting it doesn't depend on the client any server side technology can be used so these are the difference between client side scripting versus server side scripting okay so what do you need to run PHP? What exactly do you need to run PHP? Yeah. So we need to three components to work with PHP server side scripting. The first one that is Apache Web Server. We need this to run our PHP. In uh, as far as I know, in our university, we use Apache Web Server and we use a software named as. Good, good Zam. question in the chat. Some of them okay. are. Uh, that what's the difference between PHP and SQL if you could answer them uh, so the difference between uh, PHP and SQL is PHP handles the logic of the application and on the other hand SQL is used for reading and writing data from the database yeah so these are the difference between PHP and SQL uh, we use them in our uh, project like when I did uh, CS489 in my university um, I did a project on pharmacy management system. So I have to make a website uh, where I can access or, or customers can access to the different medicines and need to check whether the medicine is there or not. So we used our SQL for the login page. So login page is used, uh, we use SQL because uh, to store the name, the username and the password in our database. So the next time when a user wants to log in, he can just, you know, the, the database can just remember him and can save his info, something like that. And also, while, while anyone, while the customer wants to um, select two or more products, it actually saves in the view cart option, add cart and then view cart. This um, selections of the products, it's also stored in the SQL. So you see SQL is used for reading and writing data. From the database 
So this is the difference between PHP and SQL. And we have another, we need another component that is PHP Interpreter Program. Okay, and we also need MySQL or MariaDB database. These are the most three components that we need to run a PHP. The first one is Apache. The second one is we need a PHP interpreter program and we need a MySQL database. So learn this three thing. We will need this in future. Now let's go with our first script. So let's say, oh remember, so whatever, whatever file, you, any file, whenever you save any file, what do you do? You try to put .html dot jpg dot jpeg dot png dot txt similarly when coming to php if you want to write the php code in notepad or notepad plus plus you have to save the file with dot php so whatever file name you want to give no problem but remember while saving it go to dot php so let's now go with our first script so let's say i open a tag html tag body and then i open a php script tag and inside i said echo hello world what's echo i will tell you later on echo is actually used for printing any um, para parameter or argument okay so i will tell you about the echo in the coming slides so right now just remember when i said echo hello world i close the php tag i close the body in html so the output of this hello world, echo hello world, it will be simply hello world. So echo is basically used to print a statement, okay? There are totally two basic statements of output. So we can either use echo as our output or print as our output. No problem. The difference between them is very slightly slight, you know, it's a very small difference between them. But either way, I will explain them at the end. Um, of this session okay so user can see your source code what does that mean I already repeated in the previous slides so the thing is I cannot view the PHP source code by selecting view source in the browser I cannot see your PHP code if you make any web website and you use multiple PHP codes inside your website and I have I don't have the ability to see your PHP code it is you who can actually fix the PHP so that means whenever I am the owner of a web page I have the ability to fix everything in my web page there is no way the client can actually see my PHP code what he can see is plain HTML. He can only see the HTML. There is nothing he can do. There is nothing he can do to see my PHP code. This is because the scripts are executed on the server before the result is sent back to the browser. So whatever you see in front of your eyes, it actually were executed on the server before you can see with your eyes. So that's the reason PHP is highly secured uh, server-side scripting language. So now let's go with the basic. So we'll start with uh, PHP syntax. Okay. So in PHP, keywords such as if, else, why, echo, etc., and some classes, functions, or let me say user defined functions and keywords are not case sensitive. So that means if you put if with the uppercase letter it will make no change it will give you the output that you need on the other hand all variable names are case sensitive we need to be very careful about that so variable names are case sensitive so even a single letter with a dip with a, whether it's an uppercase or lowercase we have to be very careful where you put the variable or else it will take as a different variable I'll give an example so for example we have echo hello world echo hello world, echo, hello world, with uppercase, lowercase, and both upper and lower cases. So the output for them will be the same. They will print hello world three times because echo is a user-defined keyword. So as it's a keyword, it will not make any difference. So it will work as echo, no problem. But what about we have another example where we can see that the we have a variable named as 
color with the lowercase and that's red and then we want to print three different uh, statements for example the first one is my car is color dollar color with a dot okay about the dollar I will tell you in the coming slides and also why did we use dots in the beginning and in the end of a variable we, I will also explain them in the coming slides so right now just keep in your mind so we use my car is and I said dollar color with a lowercase I have another statement with my house is dollar color and my boat is dollar color but you see the output gonna be only with the first one my car is red but what about my house is will it give us the output as my house is red or my boat is red no it will give you the print it will give you the output for my house is and nothing it because the reason why it's nothing it will try to find dollar color with an uppercase it will try to find a variable with the same thing that you actually wanted him to print as an upper so you will not get it because you already defined a variable with lowercase so you have a lowercase color and red and when you define that lowercase as my car is color it will define as my color is red but for my house is and my boat is the color that you have mentioned it will not give you an output because only the first statement will display the value of the dollar color variable this is because dollar color with the lower case dollar color with the upper case and dollar color with the lower and upper case are treated as three different variables so we have to be very careful even a single letter even a single letter can change the whole output uh, okay so let's go to the next i have a small, uh, small question yeah. if you don't mind yeah Naveed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right so you mentioned that about the um, case sensitiveness in case of variables right so mm -hmm. what will be printed nothing will there be nothing printed or will there be any statement like uh, variable is undefined no. or something good, like good that question. yeah it, it, it will be like this for example i didn't give the output uh, sorry for my bad i was supposed to give the output also so it will be something like my call my car is and the output gonna be red but the next one will be my house is like empty after my house is there's nothing so it doesn't mean it will give you an output as an error that you have given a uh, wrong variable why there is a wrong variable no it will just keep empty so that's why you have to be very careful whether you have made some mistake or not because if there is an error know. you can easily know that maybe i have defined it another variable which i didn't define it which i didn't set it but the thing is when you do you will get uh, even if i even if i use another uh, uh, variable in here such as if i say my boat is color with let's say i put c as an uppercase and all are in lowercase it will be empty it will remain empty because i have defined only one single variable so it will be empty there will be no error showing that you have given an error there's an undefined color variable no they will not show anything it will simply show my house is nothing it's just empty my All after right. my house is nothing. clear yeah. thank you thank you clear so now we'll talk about comments in php how do we put the comments in our php code there must be some way so there are three different ways so the first way is we put a hash the hash is used for single line comment so whenever you have a single line comment you can use hash the most favorite of mine is double slash this is also used for single line comment it's easy to use because there's only single key to put the double slash well to put the hash you need to use a shift key and another key to use the hash so i think double slash is way more easier but it's your choice you can use any of them they both will work for the single line comment what about i need a multi-line comment so to use multi-line comment i will use slash star so if i use slash star and i have to close with star slash so this is used for multi-line comment so we have three different comments, uh, three different ways to uh, put comments in PHP. The first one is hash, second one is with double slash, and the third one is with slash star. Alright, now let's go with the next topic, variables in PHP. Let's start. 
So what are variables? First of all, we have to know what is variables, how does it work, what does it do? So variables are used for storing your values like text, strings, numbers, or arrays. When a variable is set, it can be used over and over again in your script. So let's say in your PHP code, you define a variable like the previous example. You define a variable such as color in a lower case and you set color is equals to red. <coughs> So, in the coming PHP code, if you work more in your code and you see that you need the same variable again, so you don't need to set it again and again. You can use the previous variable, you know, constantly in your script. So, you don't need to define it again. You can use over and over uh, in your script. All right. Um, I hope you understand the second point. The third is all variable in PHP start with dollar sign. As I told you before, that I will talk about the dollar sign. Dollar sign. I will tell you dollar sign is a thing. I will, uh, according to my explanation, it is a it is a sign that actually keeps PHP unique. So all the variable that we use in PHP, it starts with a dollar sign. Dollar sign is a thing that you must need to put with the variable to keep variables unique and i think it's a language of php so php wants to be unique than uh, all other coding languages so they use a dollar sign symbol to start a variable in php so it's a must you have to put dollar sign with it, or else you'll not get your desired output so let's let's say for example we have dollar txt hello world okay and we have another variable of dollar number as 16 Okay, so let's say I want to print uh, dollar txt with echo. Also, I want to print dollar number. So as I told earlier, see, I used echo and print both at the same time. So whether if whether I can use it or I cannot, what's the difference between them? I'll talk about uh, them in the coming slides. So what the output gonna be? So the output gonna be plain. It will say hello world and sixteen. Simple. It will give us the output. So you see, we use dollar txt and dollar number. Yeah. So this is how a variable looks like. You should start with the dollar, and you will give whatever name you need. No problem. <coughs> you can give any name. A variable can have a short name like x and y, or a more descriptive name such as age, car name, total volume. Spider-Man, Superman, no problem. It might have a descriptive name or it might have a short name. So no matter what, it will work as a variable. So, But there are some rules for PHP variables. So a variable should start with dollar sign followed by the name of the variable, as I mentioned earlier. A variable name must start with a letter or an underscore character. So maybe you can say dollar and then you can say uh, Superman, no problem, with the uppercase, lowercase, or you can say super underscore man, no problem, it is correct, in either way. A variable name cannot start with a number. So if you say dollar $16 and you want 16 to be worked as a variable, it will not work. You cannot define it. It will give you a pure error. A variable name can only contain alphanumeric characters and underscores. So what does it mean? So for example, you have a variable such as $txt. Okay, so you know this is a variable. So as I know that I cannot define variable with number, I cannot say $16, $6, $5, I cannot. But I can define $txt. So what if I say dollar txt05 will it work as a variable yes it will so if you want to mix if you want to start remember start with a letter and then you can put numbers underscores and other letters and completely you can call it as a variable there is no problem with that okay so you have to keep in your mind that if you want to use numbers you can use numbers in, I will say inside a variable like C O L O 56 R no problem you can use it as a variable there's no problem but don't start with a number so you can use a number in the in a variable but you cannot start a variable with a number you have to start with a letter 
variable names are case sensitive as I told earlier. So dollar AG with the lower case and dollar AG with the upper case, they both work as two different variables. Okay. And remember that PHP variable names are case sensitive. So they are case sensitive. Don't forget that that's the most important thing for the variable. So now let us go with our first example. So let's say we have an example of $3xt of w3schools.com and I said Nico, I love txt. And I want uh, to Nabit, Nico, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there is one question. Um, mm -hmm. uh, like we did in Java and maybe in other uh, languages, there is something called uh, local variable and uh, global variable. Is there something mm -hmm. similar in PHP? Yeah, I, I'm coming. Yeah, yeah, I'm coming to it. Yeah, coming all right, to it. all right. Sorry, all right. Go ahead. Yeah. What is the output going to be for this particular example? So this particular example will have, as I said, eco I love dollar txt. So as I already mentioned the variable, and my dollar txt has w3schools.com. So my output going to be I love w3schools.com. What if I have another example? So this is the output. What if I have another example such as dollar txt w3schools.com? But this time, I have separated my um, parameter, so I separated my argument. So I said echo, uh, I said I love, and then I have said dot, dollar txt, and a dot. So I have put my variable between two dots. What is the output going to be? So according to the previous uh, examples that I used for my car is dollar color as red. I used an example uh, in the previous slides. So the same way as dollar txt has uh, the variable has a uh, has w3schools.com. So my output gonna be I love w3schools.com. There is no difference. What about I have another example where I have two different variables. So I have x as five and I have y as four, and I want equal to be add both the variables. So the output gonna be nine. It will add both the variables. So there is no problem with that. Now. PHP is a loosely typed language. Why? Because in PHP, a variable does not need to be declared before being set. PHP can automatically convert the variable to the correct data time depending on how they are set. So it depends. It depends actually. So when we do random labs, I can show you more about all this stuff. In PHP, the variable is declared automatically when you use it. So now, let's go with the PHP basics. So we'll go with the variable scoop. Okay? So what are variable scoop, first of all? In PHP, variables can be declared anywhere in the script. Okay? The scoop of a variable is a part of the script where the variable can be referenced or used. So the scoop is usually used to actually reference a variable. So PHP has three different variable scoops the first one is local the second one is global and the third one is static so we have three different variable scoops all right so let's go through one by one so firstly we chose global and local scoop because they both are almost opposite to each other so what is global scoop so any variable which you actually declare outside a function which has a global scope and can only be accessed outside a function. On the other hand, any variable that you declare inside a function is a local scope and can only be accessed inside the function. Okay, so just explaining will not work. Let us go with an example. Yeah, so first, let's say we have an example. This is our example. We have a variable of x which is equals to 15. And as this variable is outside the function, we call it as global scoop. There's another function, uh, then, then we open the function of my test, and we have uh, defined a variable as y, which is equal to 20. And as it is inside a function, it works as a local scoop. So what I did, I wanted to output, I want an output for both variable x and y inside the function and also outside the function. And I want to see which one works. As you can see that x is outside the function 
So as expected, the output going to be outside the function. I won't get the value of x inside the function. So see, we have, I have what, what, why did I uh, divide it like them? I said the result of local x to make actually that whether to check if the x actually works inside the function because inside the function is a local scope. So see, the result of local x is empty. So you have the output, it's, it's not an error. They will not say you that you have an error, you have defined $x inside the function, you have to remove $x from the function. No, it will give you the output until it gets whatever it matches. So it matches the result of local x is, but then it sees that $x is, there is no $x inside the function. The value of x is outside the function, so it remains empty. On the other hand, when it comes to the result of local y, so it sees that the function y is already inside. It's inside and it's 20. So as it matched, so it will give us the output of the result of local y is 20. What about when I when I wanted the output for both x and y outside the function? The same thing will appear but opposite. As you can see that the, our uh, variable x, which is 15, is a global scope. It's outside the function. So as expected, we are supposed to get the value of x but we will not get the value of y the reason y is already defined inside the function and we want the output outside the function so it will give us the output only for the x so the result of global x is 15 but the result of global y is is an empty the reason there is no y inside the function So now we'll, work, we'll talk about global keyword. The one that we talked about before, that was global scoop. So what is global keyword? So the global keyword is used to access a global variable from within a function. To do this, use the global keyword. So as we saw before in our previous example, we can see that there, according to this example, there is no way if I want to actually make an output of x inside the function or no way if I want to actually execute the uh, value of uh, y because x is already is a global scope and it will be executed outside but what if I want my um, variable x to be executed inside the function is there any way that's the way the global keyword works how does it work so for example I have an example of two different variables where x is 5, y is 10. I open the function and then I said global x comma y. So when I set the global keyword inside the function, even though the variable x and y is outside the function, it will work as inside the function. What I'm trying to say is when we use a global keyword inside a function, any variables of global scope can work as a local scope. Any variables of global scoop can work as a local scoop when we define global keyword inside a function. So what is the output going to be? So the output going to be 550. You know why? Because we said dollar y equals to x plus y. And then uh, after the end of the function, we run the function and then we print out the value of y as 15. So what if I don't put global? Let's say I said function my test and I didn't put global. I said only x comma y. In this case, there will be no answer. It will simply remain empty. Because I have defined two different variables which are actually defined outside the function but not inside the function. To, uh, to get the output of variables inside the function where the variables are already in global scope, you need to use the global keyword. Now let's go with the static keyword. What does static keyword do? Normally when a function is completed, let's say from the previous function, when it's completed, all the variables that I define, it's gone, it's deleted. However, sometimes we want the local variable not to be deleted. We want those variables to work again. We need it for the job. We don't want them to be deleted. Let's say I want to work more on the, on the variables. I don't want them to be deleted. There is a way, and that way is static keyword. Static keyword helps us to 
use the same variable which is supposed to be deleted but then we can use it because that static variable will keep our variable sorry the static keyword will keep our local variables not to be deleted so let's see an example for example we have a function here and I open the function and inside that I not only I put a variable because if I just put a variable x is 0 and then I said equal x it will simply give me the value of x that is 0 even though I said x plus plus it will not give me an increment because when I set the function it's gone everything is gone because I got the value of 0 so it will not work anymore but the moment when I said static and I uh, defined a variable as 0 when I said echo of x and then I said x plus plus increment by 1 so when I run my function I get the value of 0 the moment when I run the function again I get the value of 1 yeah the moment when I when I uh, run the function again I'll get the value of 2 in this way I'll get the value of 3 in this way I'll get the value of 4 so you see static helps the function to run again and again and again whenever you need to run a function whenever you need to run uh, to, uh, to use the local variables again and again in your function use the static because static will help you to use your local variable and it will help you for your local variable not to be deleted so according to the example the output gonna be 0 1 2 so the first output gonna be 0 then it will be 1 and that will be 2 and the only reason I get this output is because of this static without static I won't get it okay let's go with now dot app operators as I already totally promised that I will talk about dot operators in the coming slides so let's talk about it what is dot operator so to link two or more variables together we use a dot operator. See? Straightforward. So to concatenate two or more variables together, we use the dot operator. The string length, strlen function, is used to know the to, to find the length of a string. When we use it, we also use the dot operator. Okay? For example, I have given multiple examples in here. So for example, we have our uh, first one is <coughs> variable of txt1 where we said hello world and let's say we have another variable of text2 which is 1 2 4 5 below I have given the output also so we can see when I said echo of text1 and I said of text2 and between them I have put two dots so this will help me to add both the variable together to link both of them together so my output gonna be hello world 1245 <clears throat> so you see the dot is actually helping me to link two different variables if I if I have more variables I can use dot again let's have another one when I said echo br is used for line break and I said str at the end hello world you see I used only single dot the reason I use single dot because there is only one variable type thing here only one function in here so as there is only one function that's the reason I use only single dot if I want to uh, if I want to use more functions let's say two or more functions so I can use more dots I must use more dots I need a dot in here also I need a dot right in here if I want to uh, use more uh, functions but as there is only a single function so I have to use only a single dot as strlen hello world i used strlen for the length of the string so it will count my strings and will give me the output of 12. let's say i have another one known as echo where i didn't use any dot i just use text one and text two with a double quotation so when i use this it will also give me the same output as the first one the one which i use with dots and the one which I didn't use dots, it will be the same hello world 1 to 4 5 because it actually uh, linked two variables together. The last example uh, is I have text 1 and text 2, but here I have only single quotation. When I use this single quotation here, I have got the output for text 1 and text 2. You know why? Because it thought maybe this is a different 
statement which is a different thing so it actually print me the um, parameters whatever I have given in here so this is the funniest thing the also very careful a single condition double condition can change everything double condition give you hello world one over five single condition give you whatever it is inside so you need to be very careful um, this is just the basic of dot operators I will talk about operator operators in our future sessions so the reason why I talk about dot operators is because you already saw many examples where we use dot operators so this dot is very important but once you become familiar with PHP it will be easy for you to use okay so with there are more operators like arithmetic operators and mathematical operators uh, there are many other operators out there we'll talk about it in our future session okay now let's talk about echo and print statement there's a slight difference between them but let's talk so in php there are two basic ways to get output the first one is echo and the second one is print the difference between both of them are small echo has no return value well, print has a written value of 1, so it can be used in expressions. I will give you another uh, explanation where echo can take multiple parameters. All of such usage, usage is rare. Why it's rare, I'll tell you. On the other hand, print can take only one argument. So, you see, echo has the ability to take more parameters. Print can take only one argument. That's the reason echo is marginally faster than print. I'll give an example definitely, but let's talk about echo first. Okay, so PHP echo statements. So let's say I have an example here. I said I opened a, I opened a PHP tag and I said echo PHP is fun. What's my output gonna be? The output gonna be PHP is fun. Let's say I have another example. I said echo hello world. What, what's the output going to be? Simple. Just like the previous examples, it will be Hello World. What about I have an example, echo this string has multiple parameters, where I have made multiple parameters and I wanted to see whether it works. It definitely works. So this string has multiple parameters. Yes? So it actually add all the parameters and it give me a single argument and why did we say that it's rare because no one no one among us not even me I don't just divide a sentence into multiple parameters we don't use it like that yeah but all we want to show is that echo has the ability to actually work with multiple parameters let's have another example where I have two variable of x and y of 10 and 10 Based on the previous examples that we did, the value for the it is 20. Okay, is equal x plus y, or just add both the variable. This is equal. Now, let us go to print, print statement. Okay, so let's say I have a code of print PHP is fun. What will be the output? It's the same as echo, PHP, that's fun. Let's say I have another one, I said, print hello world. What will be my output? Simply, hello world. Now let's say I have print, this string has multiple parameters. So I want to see whether it will work. It will not work. Because echo has the ability to take multiple parameters not print and that's the reason print cannot work with multiple parameters it will give you a syntax error that it got multiple commas in the <coughs> situation okay all right <coughs> sorry then we have another example when we said the string has overall single parameter as print has the ability to take single parameter so the output gonna be the string has a rules in the parameter. So you see the difference between echo and print. So echo has the ability to take multiple parameters. On the other hand, print does not have the ability to take multiple parameters. So this is the difference between echo and print. Let's have the final example where I have two different variables. I wanted to print them with 
print the output gonna be saying a string so this is the print statement difference between echo and print statement and also this is not the end we will do more sessions this is just a part one of our php and we will we'll have a lot of topics to be talk speak, speak on like data types um, operators then sessions cookies there are many many topics we'll cover in our future sessions thank you very much so if you guys have any question feel free to ask